back up there every now and then. So the plan is to paint a nice environment, um, something kind of like this, where things are divided into layers like this. And then we're gonna animate, or I already animated the character because it will just take way too long to, to animate this guy. Uh, on the fly. So I did a loop with this guy and then I have some other fun uh, elements that uh, we're gonna sandwich all together. We're gonna move from after the painting we're gonna move from Procreate into Luma Fusion, my other favorite app and then we're gonna make it nicely come together I think I had a, yeah, so you kind of get something a bit like this. We see how much fun we can have with it and how much, uh, how far we can take it. But uh, that's the plan, make a, make a movie scene. So going from kind of this clean stuff like this here to a bit more dirty, gritty. I kind of like that. Uh, a bit of this sort of more gritty look kind of like a surveillance camera or something like that so that's at least the plan okay so first thing is to paint the environment so I'm gonna go with about the same size that you have here I already uh, sort of tried a couple of times. I, I kind of wanted this guy to be uh, part of it. So that was also sort of an animation. I, I tested it, but it, it, it became a bit too jerky. Um, here's kind of the, the sketch animation for it. And then I just made elements that I uh, liquefied and moved into the right positions for that but I I thought it was actually kind of kind of more fun with this uh, with this guy so it's a real cartoon okay so let's start with the canvas so in Luma Fusion you can't go, I'm just going to check the size there. Yeah. You can't go higher than 4096. Like your, your images, you can put in bigger stuff, but they will be scaled down. So I'm going to just go with RGB, go 4096 wide and then 1400 high. Cause we want it to be really wide. So we have uh, some distance to travel. So first thing I wanna wanna do is to just put in a frame showing our kind of end frame, if you will. So I have some nice brushes here, and also with the with the aspect. So this is sixteen nine. So this will be our sort of finished aspect. So it's nice to have a bit more to, to work on here, right? This can kind of be like our main, it's nice to have this on top that will kind of guide me to where I should kind of keep within. So I'm gonna make a new layer. So I will always keep this on top. So this is just, just call these 16 to nine, so that's like HD, like a regular TV size or cinema, not not the really wide cinema size, uh, but uh, more regular uh, aspect there. So now I just want to 
gonna calm down the background a bit. I also wanna just have that ghosted nicely on top. So now I'm gonna paint the kind of like the main layer. So I want this to be inside some sort of shed. So this is maybe like industrial area inside some sort of building. So I'm just thinking here is kind of where the the top is the ceiling. And then we have the, the bottom, the floor here. And we have that robot that's going to walk through, right? So I kind of want to see a little glimpses of him first and then kind of a bigger reveal. So I want to have that maybe here is the the more reveal of the whole robot here. And then before that, it's just different sized windows. I'm not, we can set up kind of like a simple perspective, just a one point perspective really. But I'm not really gonna use perspective lines too much. Um, I kind of want it to be no straight lines, you know, just hand hand painted. So just a bit organic kind of fitting with the, the robot animation. And I love this, let's say we're in an old factory or something and there's always these different windows. Some are broken, some are still intact, but they're they're very often different, like divided into different pieces, different purposes. Just to get some nice playful randomness here. And then maybe we have a window here as well, but I'm gonna, it's a lot of windows here now just to, but we're gonna board some of them up. So here, thinking that there are some boards across here. <laughs> so it's very sketchy at the moment here, but um, I wanna kind of work fast in the beginning and then we can add more detail and that sort of stuff later. Some nice old abandoned something. I also love, I take great inspiration to sort of these abandoned places. Uh, it's so much stuff you never think about when you see these things like small details of all kinds of stuff people gathered in this places or shapes of engines or of different factory parts that are made for different purposes. So nice with just some stuff kind of blocking the path or, you know, what we see here. Some boxes, electricity wires, all kinds of stuff. Just gonna scale it a little down because I'm I'm gonna zoom in a little later, you know, when we well, we got some movement in this, some animation. It's uh, one thing that you can't really animate well on the iPad yet uh, in any in any app. 
is some nice handheld motion on the camera, for example. But I have a nice trick for that. So maybe this is the back of the room here. And then we're on the, the last wall over here. So it's a long room, so it's going to be a nice, nice dolly camera move, kind of like a track. When the camera goes onto a small wagon, that's called a dolly. And then they just track together with the character. I see some questions or comments. Hey, Sean. Hey, Paul Gray. Cool that you could join. Lori. Hi, Nico. Look forward to schoolism class. Yeah. I actually have a new schoolism class coming up in just, I think we're speak, talking days, not, not even, uh, or within a week or so. It's a new, new class at schoolism. So I have one class. That's it is good if you're starting in Procreate or if you're worked with Procreate for a long time. It's also good. It takes pretty much everything that Procreate has uh, and perspective, environments, characters, exterior, interior, and animation. So that's that's a course I already have at Schoolism, and now it's a new upcoming course. That's like a good natural second course where I paint my most detailed painting, go to my most detailed level, which I never made a tutorial of before. Um, and then I also breathe life into that. I make animate that also with Luma Fusion. So this is kind of like a small teaser for what's coming in the new course. So I, I, I worked as an animator before for some years, a 3D animator. And I worked with 2D painting, concept art, illustration, animation also for a long time. So it's, but I never worked as a 2D animator, but I worked with compositing and visual effects and all kinds of stuff. But it's now that these sort of uh, animation options are popping up on the iPad and I only work on the iPad. It's so much fun. It's like the, the power you can animate in Procreate uh, and also uh, in LumaFusion, you have both compositing power and keyframing and yeah, all kinds of goodies. So I think I have a good sort of skeleton of what I want here now before we're gonna sort of pick the windows. So I made sure my my shapes are closed for these gaps here. So when I'm picking these holes, I get a good selection and not the whole area. So what 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 are what is blue now is going to be the, uh, the windows themselves and we might cover up a bit more and I'm going to put some dirty glass in and everything so but this is a good uh, selection here I'm going to invert that and I'm just going to add a darker value into new layer so new layer put that under my sketch and then I'm filling that so now we have the sketch on top and we have the full sort of silhouette layer. And I'm, I like to clip mask my sketch hair and also to alpha lock. I also, this is my setup on my quick menu. So I have alpha lock down here, flip horizontally, erase straight up and then paint straight down. And then two of my 
most used brushes, favorite brushes here. So alpha lock, I'm also, you can also take two fingers to slide to the right on the layer. That's also a shortcut for alpha lock. So I'm just gonna switch to my jitter brush. So it's basically these two brushes I'm gonna use a lot. Uh, maybe a little of this one, it's like a round brush. And then probably gonna use the airbrushes. So this is just a copy of a these two are the same brush, but this is in overlay mode. So, but I'm gonna go with the jitter one for now, because I want to just paint, get some texture in here, some dark and some variation. So I'm painting in this uh, new silhouette layer that we just made. And I might cover up more here, but it's, I don't want to put all the kind of the interior stuff into this one layer. I want to get a nice parallax. That is part of the goal here. You're also going to need to put stuff into several layers. Most of my brushes are set to glazed mode. So that's, I can paint over my own brush strokes and it's gonna be like super fine. But if I press hard, you you see it's more, more gritty and more grainy and gritty. Uh, trying to read a bit of the comments here. <laughs> yeah, cool. Cool that you like the the current Procreate course. That's good. So. making some places a bit more dark, a bit more light here and there, but overall, I kind of like the, the look here. You might hear a kind of a weird sound now. I have this, in my house, there's this old, I think it's called re Relay, that, that kind of detects when it gets dark, that it wants to turn on the outside lights. And it has this transition phase when it goes from dark or bright to dark where it has that sounds like a <laughs> this small sort of like a dentist drill or something. It lasts for a couple of minutes and then and then the light turns on. I don't know why it does that, but yeah, hope it's not too annoying on your end. Okay, something like this. And I'm gonna clamp the values here a bit, going to curves. So clamping means you're kind of pushing the, the brights and the darks together so you get less contrast. I just want to kind of, simp I don't want the super darks yet on, on here. Maybe something like this for now. And I'm also going to brighten like my sketch layer here is probably totally black. So I'm just going to lift that a little. Yes. And uh, we can start doing the foreground now. So this is our mid ground, sort of the most important layer. And now I want to go totally black and put in some nice, still with my frame here in mind, like what we're going to end up, we're going to crop a bit in here, right? So 
new layer on top and now comes typical stuff that I have in my almost all my paintings right the wires and stuff hanging but this is foreground so this is much closer to us in the image so this will be out of focus a bit and moving faster past us than the rest here so maybe also some bigger things but I, I have to be a bit careful so I'm not sort of blocking too much you know it's better if it's more sort of thinner things being in the way here almost like if I drew a forest this would be just leaves and bushes and stuff instead but try to make interesting silhouettes so it kind of looks like it's stuff and also another cool uh, thing to use here is the selection tool freehand and then you go to color fill because then you can just chisel out shapes and then finish them now that will fill with the black so the color you've chosen and it makes these really nice sharp uh, shapes which is really hard to paint so if i deselect now you see they kind of pop out nicely but if you want to go back to selection you just need to turn it off again because it's it remembers that you had a color fill the last time so just so you know maybe some thinner things popping up here you want a lot of clutter but it's trying to kind of make it playful as well flipping flipping the canvas that's important as well seeing it with fresh eyes so I think I want some sort of shape coming down here Maybe it's part of a some sort of ventilation thingy. I also want one more layer in between here. And some smaller stuff so I, I usually paint the bigger stuff first and then I go over to the smaller brush smaller details later it's kind of logic right you you want to knock in the bigger shapes first and then you want to work your way down in detail and when you work your way down in detail you also start zooming in so I'm like from the beginning of this you see that I've I haven't zoomed in past the canvas right so I, I I'm not going in like this I'm keeping it so I can see the whole thing on my screen and I want to keep it like that for as long as possible and I think for this tutorial this quick thing I'm gonna I'm not going to go beyond this. I'm not going to zoom in. I can do enough detail at this distance, so it's fine. Just going to see if there's any. <laughs> Thank you, Paul. It's very nice. Your comments here. Um... Yeah, no, I've, I've used Procreate and only Procreate for all my, 
personal and professional work since 2012. And I really love Procreate and the iPad. You know, it's such a good tool. So right now I'm working on a iPad Pro, 12.9 uh, inch, the newest one. I got the one with the one terabyte. And before that, I, I think I had the 2018 model before that. So I, I don't change it every year doesn't really need that so I think this is maybe okay for now with our foreground stuff we can always go back and add more stuff when we see that maybe it's not working as well as we want so I'm gonna say enough for now with this Just gonna check the time. My my hope here is to have the painting done by, uh, I guess eleven. Uh, so one hour with the painting process, and then one hour with the animation. So that's kind of like my rough plan here. So okay, we have a little bit of foreground, and I just want to add a bit of mid ground as well between these two layers just to have so the the main parallax will happen i'm going to just make this even brighter or just lower the opacity so i see more of what i'm doing here and i'm just pushing the brightness a little up so It's easy to see the difference between my foreground and the background stuff here. And I want to have what's really effectful is sort of this kind of like plastic stuff hanging down. If you've been to like old construction sites or so, there's this nice plastic that's construction plastic or whatever that's hanging down it would be great to kind of animate that today as well with kind of a little wind pushing the plastic a bit back and forth but that's that's a little yeah we'll see I, I don't think we're gonna do that today but it's possible it's not so easy but uh, Yeah, we'll see. I have an idea for many elements I want to put in and then we just see what what the time says. How much we can squeeze in. So the, the cool thing with Procreate is that you can paint and you can keyframe animate, right? You have a lot of power in Procreate. And then with Luma Fusion, which is an editing app, like it's, uh, uh, it would kind of replace Premiere in Adobe or Final Cut or something like that. But it also has <clears throat> compositing power. It also has keyframe possibilities. So it's a bit like After Effects or Nuke or Shake, if somebody remembers good old Shake. So that's the super cool thing with luma fusion you can key green screen you can you can animate blurs you know so one thing is more blurred in the timeline so you can do like a focus shift thing or you know it's uh, so much possibilities now which is awesome more and more i feel like procreate and luma fusion they are professional tools on the ipad and it's not that many of them you also have like Affinity Photo, Affinity Designer, which are great. Um, but I think more and more will come. Uh, 
more and more professional, more and more software creators are taking it seriously. And it's such a fun thing to work on. I think the iPad with the Apple pencil too, it's just, yeah, noise. I wish I was paid a little for each time I promoted the iPad or, <laughs> yeah. So just thinking silhouette there, you know, it's all about silhouette so far. And on the two last layers, the foreground and then the layer I'm painting now, it's it's only only silhouette. No shading, nothing yet. So but you'd be surprised how far you can get with only silhouette. It sounds like a beginning of a horrible rap. So this is a lot of stuff here now. So I'm gonna bring up the opacity on that layer. I'm gonna alpha lock this new layer uh, and I'm gonna darken it so that it's not black because then it boils together with the other one, but just figuring out a nice in between there. All right, and um, now the outside. So, new layer all the way down at the bottom. This will be our background. So I'm thinking that this old factory is just this building we are in is just opposite a, another building so it's kind of like yeah like a pathway between them so i'm just going to knock in some simple detail here just to kind of give myself a guide to where where the windows there should be and where it meets ground and then I can turn off the foreground a bit and then, yeah, we can add a bit more detail. We're not going to see much of it, but since we are doing this longer camera move, so if I touch hold here now, boom, I can only see that layer. So I'm going to do a bit of the same here with adding windows and stuff and then selecting that, but make it uh, simpler because we, we're not going to see much of this. <laughs> Just going to see if there's any questions. Facebook, talking about Facebook. <laughs> Larger iPad, huh? Yeah. yeah. Even bigger than the 12.9. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, I think if you go from a, like a Cintiq or something like a 24 inch Cintiq, then if you're used to that size, then you probably want something bigger. But I've always loved to paint small and draw small. Like I, sitting in meetings or so, I was always fold like A4 into an A5 and then just draw, sketch on that. And yeah, but I, but I understand if you would have want a bigger iPad. Maybe they will make one. I've I've heard some rumors, you know, just on the on the internets. 
but I have no clue if it's any validation or if it's any truth to that. So I'm dividing up a couple of windows now to make them a bit more windowy. Just gonna see now what I'm seeing of this. So we sort of have the main focus straight on, straight across here and then maybe some bigger signs up here and yeah. So think of this like a, just a long wall, basically. Not all of these are windows, but let's let's make a little selection here. I think we can maybe just one more at the back. So what to divide. So I'm using kind of like a loose style today. No, no rulers, no perspective guide. Just to give it a bit more of that organic, since we are painting a, like a worn down factory industry thingy. It's uh, nice that you don't have all the straight lines and stuff. It's kind of fitting with the theme a little. So again with the window. Oh, wait, see now I almost did it. So color fill needs to be turned off. Then it works like a selection tool again. these two and then I'm gonna skip the other one there not everything is a window maybe not that one actually and here and yeah it's noise um, and then here I'm also selecting the bottom invert Different value, new layer, put it underneath and fill it. It's almost impossible to see now that it's a different value. So I'm gonna change it up a little. We need a background layer. So I'm just gonna fill, I, I don't like to use the background color as a layer in the end. I want to be able to paint in it. So I'm just filling this layer with that paint and I'm just alpha locking and click masking these two here. So this will be, maybe I should group them and give them names. It's a bit, so this is like the main layer or group just turning everything on again here now so that's the main one we don't need to group this one this is uh, gonna call it mid ground foreground and then we have background we can actually add this one as well background all right a lot of clutter um, and I want one more layer here over background that's going to be grass so I'm just going to use white for now just because it's possible to see so just gonna use the selection tool here. I could use the color fill, but 
it's too late, but just to get it started here. Just also break this up a little with just a few plants and grass strands. We're gonna get some color into this, but I'm gonna keep it kind of monochrome in the end, but I, I want it to be colored. Let's see, we have another 20 minutes before I should move on to Luma Fusion. So, okay, let's add some color to this. I'm gonna just use curves now to get the grass a bit more green, but I'm still gonna keep it really bright. And I'm gonna use an overlay layer. I'm gonna use a, more than one. Uh, yeah, let's start with this one actually, the main one. Just gonna push it a little towards cyan here, push it a little dark bluey. Just wondering if it should be a little darker. We can, the cool thing is that we don't have to uh, make every decision here. We can also do a lot of it in Luma Fusion. You can, because we're gonna keep the layers there. So we can actually uh, grade a lot of it in Luma Fusion. I'm just giving it kind of like a, a beginning grade, if you will, just uh, to give it some direction. So it's not totally colorless, except uh, I think actually I want to have the, it's not much color on the foreground. I think I actually just want to keep that black. And then here on the outside, here we're gonna use this uh, new layer and then put that into overlay mode. And add a little color. So the cool thing with overlay is that you can add both color and brightness and darkness into one and the same layer. So I'm just filling it now with one color. And I'm actually going to turn off the other layers here a little just to, I'm actually going to keep mid on a little so I see the colors here. Kind of want a bit of that red. <laughs> Just to have some variation. I actually think I'm going to keep my layers like this. So this layer, the one on top here, We'll get some different treatment. Maybe fill. No. Trying to find a nice sort of starting point here with these colors. <laughs> I 
here I'm thinking some windows are still there maybe but kind of broken I just want some variation out here we're not gonna see a lot of this here but just to just to have some of that variation Some darker tones here in this frame framework. So I'm not too big fan of the sort of the main color here now. I think I'm just gonna push it a bit with curves here. Yeah, that's better. Lift the darks a bit. Yeah, looks better. I'm just gonna merge that overlay layer because it's only on that flat background layer anyway, so. adding some different tones to this. And it's not that much we see here. We might, we're gonna see some more of it, so I, but I just want to sort of get the most important things first here with uh, what we actually see right now, right now. And let me, oop, just want to move this one. I think I'm gonna go into the background layer there. I'm gonna sort of make some selections like there was glass shards kind of sticking out a few places. Maybe a couple of these ones are missing a window. And uh, yeah, all good. It's also here, the broken window stuff here. I'm just gonna pull this down with curves. So you see now it suddenly looks like broken windows. And but it looks this under the no fint. Alt go bra. Yep. Just my wife. I we kind of plan to have her help me out a bit with uh, reading questions and stuff. But we also have a couple of boys that needed their mother. So, yeah. Speaking of reading questions, I'm gonna have a look through if there is some. New ones. 16 inch would be great, yeah. You have an iPad, Laurie, and you consider buying a Cintiq? No. No, I'm just kidding. It's, uh, they're all good, good tools. Just turning off the other elements here okay 10 more minutes before I should move on to 
the other part. Let's see, let's see. So making a movie scene in two hours is less than ideal, but it's doable. <clears throat> I will show you. Should be, should be doable. Let me switch to another brush here. I'm gonna go with a little stripey here. And I'm gonna add some color dynamic to this one. So each stroke looks a bit different here. Let's see how that, it's not a huge variation, but let's go a bit more crazy. Gonna use this for grass as well now. So I'm just gonna go into this layer. So you see now it's a gives a bit more variation on our grass layer here, and we don't need a whole lot of this layer but I'm just a little unsure of what we need. So I'm gonna still kind of fill it out a bit in the, the wide part here. So I'm gonna go a little darker here. Love the color, like to do this color vari variation on the brush is just <laughs> saves so much time. I'm gonna fill the, the bottom of this. So we will use this as one layer, it's nice and simple. Um, but I will have a little layer on top there that will darken. Let me see, I'm gonna use the error, I'm gonna use the overlay actually. And I'm gonna take these layers one at a time. So I'm gonna pick that nice little darker reddish color and I'm gonna add that to the bottom there. So it's kind of darkening a bit towards the bottom like this tap a bit too and maybe a bit more of that yellow 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 and then a little more of that blue on top there and then we get this nice sort of ambient occlusion thing going on It looks fairly nice and chaotic. Special date today. I wasn't sure if I were going to mention it, but yeah, September 11th, 20 years today. It's funny how a few things in life where you totally remember what you did that day, where you were. I have two two days like that. It's the September 11th where I remember where I was, what I was doing, what people said. Um, and then there's this Norwegian tragedy, uh, July 22nd, where a terrorist killed a lot of people. So these two days, just every year, you just remember exactly 
almost what you ate to breakfast. And yeah, it's, it's funny how the brain kind of locks non-important details into events like that. Okay. More happy talk from now on. So, okay, what time is it? It's 56. So, okay, we need to make window. So, background finished. Main, I'm gonna put one more layer in there. And this will be our windows. So, I am going to fill that with. Uh, just going to start with just a random color just so I really s easily see it uh, and then I'm going to do the same as before to kind of break it up a bit So not, not all windows need to be uh, destroyed here, but maybe these then. Okay, something like that. Um, and then I'm going to put this into screen mode alpha lock and i'm gonna paint it fairly dark to begin with so it kind of disappears now a little uh, but it's still there you know i didn't erase it i just darkened it and on screen mode it's kind of just hard to see so i'm gonna go with a brighter value now and just tap a little so just zoom in a little so you can see what I'm doing here also with uh, you know the stripey stripey brush so if I just go this now you see that it's filling it up so it's not that easy to read now let's just turn off this layer. Oh, that's better. <clears throat> so this will be the dirty glass. And it's always more crap towards the the corners you know they've maybe washed some windows a long time ago but then it's always hard to get into the corners and that's always where you want to put most of the grit and this layer we will also keep in screen mode so this will also be exported separately yeah it's good enough um <clears throat> just gonna merge these two and i'm gonna Paint a little on the mid ground. Ah, I spent my first hour. But let's see here. Uh, 
doesn't take that much here so for this is pretty working fairly well it's going a little darker but also i want some of that sort of plasticky stuff to be a bit brighter let's pick up some <clears throat> brighter tones just to get some variation and uh, maybe some a few kind of highlights I'm going to go into curves now, push this a bit more towards the blue, lifting the dark values into blue and also crunching it a bit more down towards cyan. Well, that's better. I like that. Maybe the blue is a bit too much. I'm looking at the iMac as well. It's <clears throat> looking a bit different than your uh yep the other screen there okay so <clears throat> one more layer i need to give a little more love here i'm gonna add clip mask a new layer put it in overlay mode so same as the other one We're gonna add a bit, a bit of colors, and you know, just some variation here, like the boards, for example. That's wood, so a bit more yellow in that. Also, want to add a little of these color dynamics on this brush. It's just nice that it's has a bit of variation each time I use it and makes it a bit more playful. So giving one wash over the floor here. So I want that more yellow. So I'm just going to switch brush to one that doesn't have color dynamics. It is blue from before, so I have to, since it's on an overlay layer, it can be a bit hard to kind of nail the color. Get my stripey dirt brush something like that I also want to let me just turn off the front here I'm gonna Use my airbrush and just darken down. I'm still in the same overlay layer here. Just go a bit darker towards the corners and where the floor meets wall here. A little of that ambient occlusion here. There we go. Okay. So now we have our elements. I'm gonna to need to export them. So I'm gonna start with the, the background, this one. I'm gonna get all that in one layer. So I'm gonna share a PNG. And the next one will be, I have to turn off the other things because now transparency counts so this one 
that's the windows it kind of looks weird now but we're gonna set it to screen mode and then we have our main layer mm -hmm. PNG just grabbing something to drink um, mid ground PNG and uh, foreground PNG PNG is great it's like uh, it saves transparency and um, you it's kind of like just exporting layers and there's no loss in quality so here is you know my test where I already kind of did it um, so that's what we're gonna do now. So I'm starting a new project here in Luma Fusion. Uh, you can add based on the first clip here, but I, I want to have 30 FPS and I want to have uh, 69 landscape. And then I press the little plus there. And we can start with our background. And I want this shot to last 10 seconds is good. So we can zoom in on the timeline here. Okay, and then we have, uh, we have our windows. And I'm gonna move this one up. We have six layers of video here. You can have six layers of 4K video streaming at the same time. It's pretty crazy. Uh, and here I want, I'm gonna just double tap this one because we want to put that into um, another blend mode screen. So now it looks like it did in Procreate. Here you can adjust the opacity uh, and then it's the mid ground. And then the background. Do we have room for everything? Ha! Huh. It's almost like I planned this. Okay. Um, we will. Give me half a second here. I'm going to go into this file. This is where I have my elements. I'm also going to put in these new ones and then we can just add that photos albums um, what did I call that album paint and anim LBX okay P as in the letter uh, Okay, let me see here. P, paint, paint, there we go. So here we have our elements. Um, and we have this one, for example. This is, I just screen recorded um, the moving robot thing. So you see here, using the screen record and then I uh, played the loop right because it's it's a 32 frame loop I think and instead of just exporting that being one second maybe and then you have to duplicate that and then stitch that together I just screen recorded instead and that's a trick I use a lot uh, where I want something a quick animation to last longer I just screen record it with the iPad and then like now I'm just gonna put it down here and I'm gonna make sure it's the same length here so you see it's there we go so you kind of see the robot back there 
but we need to key it as well. So we can turn it off for now because first thing I want to animate parallax in all the layers. So, and it's kind of crazy now, right? It's, it's hard to see what's going on. So I'm going to start with the foreground, double tap this one. And you have the timeline here. So I'm going all the way to the left. And here you have size and position and stuff. So we're going to animate this. So I wanted to start over here. And give it a keyframe. And then go to the end and then slide it all the way. So this has the, the most travel way. So that's going to go all the way to the end there. So if I go back now and play it back, you see the foreground moves. So that's already a little animation. Um, and then we go to the next layer. We do the same, make a keyframe, but now we can't move it as much, right? It needs to be a little less for each layer. So right now I put in 42 in, you know, here. Um, so I can look at that and then I can go 42 the other way, minus 42. So now you see you have some parallax between these two layers. Still looks pretty weird uh, yet, but uh, Bear with me here. And this is, you know, I may not hit the perfect parallax in the first go, so we will see. So next layer, let's try maybe 25, 25-ish. You can also tap these small little arrows on the side here to get, like, if you want to nail 25, for example. So now we have more parallax. I actually think I don't want that much parallax between the mid ground. So I'm going to go to 30 here, maybe 30, 35. Because I want the foreground to be really close. And then just a little parallax between the two other layers and we can also scale like a way to get the foreground to move even faster is to scale that layer up so i might do that so now we've animated a few of the layers now we need the glass there to follow like the windows we need to follow along with this layer so we can go into this layer and we can go into this little thing here and then copy. And then we can go to this layer, window layer, uh, and then paste, then it pastes the keyframe. So now you see the window, the glass sticks with the that layer it has the same you copy pasted the same keyframes and then the background so we will start giving it a keyframe keyframe is down here here you can uh, delete one keyframe here you can delete all keyframes but once you set one keyframe you and if, uh, all the other keys will uh, be made automatic when you move something. So I'm just going to move it first this direction. So let's try 20 and then 20 the other way. Not too bad. I want to 
get the foreground a bit bigger. So I'm gonna now delete all keyframes and I'm gonna scale it up to be bigger. But 117% and I also want to add a blur. So I go into color and effects and I go up here to this, no, this one. That's where you have the blurs and I'm just going to give it this Gaussian blur and you can adjust how much it's going to be. So I'm going to keep that maybe on four. Uh, and then back to keying that. You can also key the blur if you want. It can start on one value and then end up on another. So anything here, the cropping, uh, all the stuff up here, you can key pretty much everything. It's, it, that's the really cool part. Yeah, starting to work here. Just think that I'm gonna do the same with this in between layer. I'm gonna delete the keys and just scale it up a little. And then add a key. So move it a bit more, maybe try 50 to minus 50. Yep, that's better. But I want to adjust both the colors and also making that also a bit blurred. So I'm going to color and effects. Uh, Blurring again on this one, but then maybe just one. So it's a little blurred. Um, and then I go into this little color palette. So I'm up here now. Pressing original. So now it's kind of like opening curves and hue saturation brightness and all that stuff at the same time. So now I can also darken darken it I want it a little darker but I don't want to mess up the values too much maybe something like that so I can always check before and after here um, Just adjusting the, so I can push it a bit more towards blue maybe. Yep, it's working. I also want to adjust this one, the main layer a little. Um, no blurs, but I'm going into the original there as well. I just, should we put it down? I just kind of want that a little less contrast. And then a bit more cyan there, so. The stripes on top and the bottom is, is a little bug there, I think. Yeah, I'm deleting that. Okay, I'm gonna keep it as it is. Time, 20 minutes into the second hour. Okay. Let's get in the robot. So 
just turning on the robot layer and I'm turning off the other ones. So here, here we can turn that on and off or audio and stuff like that. So it's cool, cool stuff. Um, so I'm double tapping our character here and first we can crop it because we don't need we don't need much over and under. We not, we don't want that Procreate menu to be part of this. So maybe something like that. So he's moving happily. So now we want to key him. So get rid of the white. So I go into color and effects again and I go to the little keyhole on the top right and I press light luma key, the lower right one of those. And already it's fairly good, but you can like the edge blur, for example, I don't want that. And erosion distance, that's kind of nice. Then it eats a little in to what's outside. So you shouldn't see that blinking on and off on the top and the bottom there. Uh, again, that's a little bug there but I you see here you kind of lose part of him so you can still adjust fine adjust the the brights and the darks here so I think this is a this is a good key all right so now we turn on the, the foreground again and I think we're gonna wait a little with the rest so I double tapped again. Uh, and we're gonna animate him now, and I, I just think that size-wise, we're gonna have to adjust him a little as well. So maybe this is a good size. So. Now you see he's on the outside of those windows and but we're gonna start with the key here and then push him i kind of want him to start here and then we see how far i'm gonna push him all the way to that point and see if that makes sense with his leg movement yeah pretty good it doesn't slide like you you see his his foot is kind of staying of this even though it's a bit jit jittery but that's because it's a it's a standstill loop that's you know so it will be a little jittery but I movement wise we got a nice section here So I only need to, let's just turn on the other layers. And I, I want to also play a bit more with him in case of uh, color and value. Sorry that I'm not answering or looking at the comments here, but let me see. From Sam Lam uh, about the sketches and the design of them like silhouettes any tip on how we can develop that is it about building our visual library yes like uh, I really recommend painting from reference and from imagination equally much so you when you paint from reference, you fill your mental library with information. So that's your, then you add books to your library. And when you paint from imagination, that's when you actually use those books. So 
you need to do both to to kind of fill up your mental library with cool shapes and stuff like that so that's uh yeah important there we go do dum dum do dum do 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 yeah terminator theme song there kind of looks like a kind terminator but we're not finished we only did sort of the what should i call the main the main part so okay stuff has the right value it's animated we got some movement we have a nice parallax let me just try to foreground i want to scale it up even more just to test it i'm gonna scale it up to maybe there just to get more movement sam just to see if that makes it better Okay, so you can double tap this window here, then you get the full view. Yeah, I think that works better actually. Do 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 do. Sorry, it's at least playing inside my head. Do 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 do. Ugh. I miss good Terminator movies. Um, all right. So next step, I want to add some moving haze and smoke here. So what we have to do, we maxed out on layers. So what we do now is that I'm, I'm just duplicating the first part here and then I can just move stuff over. So this, is uh, the two back layers and I want to have a little smoke kind of moving across here so I will only move these layers over here just so we have the main important layers but now we have room for two more here so in my in my little library here I have it's kind of invisible but this is like a just a smudged out png white smoke here and i have some uh, dots that's also on a png and a few other things that we're gonna add um <laughs> making moonwalk yeah yeah my David Chan, my new course is coming out very soon, like in a week or so. So pretty damn darn soon. Alrighty, so back to Luma. Um, adding that piece of haze here. So it's just a PNG painted in Procreate. So you see it already kind of give that fog there. So double tapping it and then, and I, this is painted on 4096 by 4096 pixels. So it's just to get it as big as possible. So I'm also gonna scale it up pretty far and I'm gonna keyframe so this will move across like that, right? So keyframe it here. And then keyframe it here. So this is, get some of that drifty. It also gives a nice separation behind Mr. Terminator. Just gonna move it a bit more so we have even more movement. You see more parallax now. 
and you can you know you can film you can boil water at home film it with your iphone uh, against like a black background just take a black t-shirt put it on a board put it behind your uh, boiling water film that you can add that as an element you know it's it's so easy um, i'm gonna show you uh, a little later here how to do cool stuff like that and i want to have also so the same i'm gonna just add the same part one more time double tap but this is on top of the dude so you can also flip it if you want some variation um, and i'm gonna squeeze it a little and stretch it out this way oh, that's a little too too much a little too much a little too weird so Let's add a keyframe here. I'm not going to move this as far, I think, but I'm going to do something else. Whoops. I'm actually going to try to move it in the opposite direction just to see what that does just starting out on this side and then ending up on that side so let's see what that does yeah let's I think the movement of the first one is actually a bit too much. I think it should uh, not move that fast. I'm going to have to turn off the other one just to see what the first one does. Yep. It's better. And then this one, I have to turn on the visibility. So you see how fast it is just to test things out here. It's really great. I'm gonna make this one move faster in the same direction so it but only we see a little of it. What how does that look now? Yeah, doesn't look that bad. Cool. Okay. So what we need to do now is render out this part. So this is already working well. Uh, but I, I actually want to wait with these images. So it's this part that counts now. So I'm going to render this out in really high resolution so i'm going to down at the bottom here and then movie photos and then resolution i'm going to go down to 4k standard uh, video quality down to ultra that's almost uh, no comp 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 comprehension no come what's that word again <laughs> compromised no Compression, compression, ah, oh, good. So I'm exporting to get both the first and the second part. But then cool thing now is we can, we have the whole animation here. I'm just gonna only get that last part. So now this is one layer right 
that's cool. Now we have these four layers here merged down to one. So now we can keep adding even more stuff. So I'm gonna move this one over here and then the windows of course should be under there. Do I need some more stuff? Yeah, I'm gonna put some pollen. Um, then I actually wanted to time 36. Mm. Yeah, let's let me just count layers here because I want to have a little haze between these two layers. Yeah. Mm, just thinking. Okay, let's wait with those. And like that. And I'm gonna put in this one. Okay, so back to the the album. And I want to put in this element now. Just dots outside. So it's maybe a bit hard to see. <laughs> it's a little hard to see. Well, let's scale it up a bit anyways. So it's just small. I'm thinking of uh, like pollen, right? Start the key here. So I'm going to move it across the screen and maybe with a little sort of downwards movement. So it's Maybe it's also ash, right? Maybe it's I'm also going to rotate it a little. Could be dust, could be uh, pollen. Let's see if we can see that all. That's a little in the air. But uh, another cool thing you can do with this is that you can add and this is going to be probably difficult to see, but in this one, like we had the blurs and we have the blurs here and then we have the key here, but in the middle you have fun things like, for example, uh, bump, tall, distort. I want to have the swirl. Where are you? Twirl. You, you kind of see on the right side there that it's messing about a bit with the with the dots, right? So I also want to animate this from one side here to the other. So just gonna give a bit better movement and I'm going to do the same with the smoke inside so you better so you see better what it does so I'm gonna move this up and this up and I'm just gonna add one more of those dots and move them a little differently just so it's um, so we have a bit more of them and move it the opposite direction so that you have kind of these things moving across from each other. So 
it looks a bit better. Yep. Okay, cool. So now we need to move this one over here. And I want to add a little, a little uh, of this same smoke here. And, but just a little, and I'm going to turn this this way, scale it up. Key it. Make it follow. Should also have a little parallax there. So it's sort of also in the middle of the room in a way. And then blending, just put the opacity really down. But also give it, wait, I'm going to put it through the cyan bluish color filter and then push the blending down. Let it a bit more toxic. Okay, so I don't know how that looks without, uh, I'm just going to move just to see what it looks like with the foreground. So this is how you have to kind of play around with these layers to see how it works, right? So you see now that smoke is just too, way too thick. So. Now we can at least adjust that one down. Something like that. I think that's enough. And I want to put that twirl thing on that one as well. So go to this one, find twirl. There it is. Now you kind of see more of what it does, but it's, it's a, uh, too much of course so but this is it's really does cool things here just to get some twirly movement in this smoke here I'm gonna add a keyframe here and then move it over there so Let's just see how that looks. Nice, subtle. It's subtle, but it's there. And I kind of feel like the this layer now is a bit too dark. Original. That's better. That is better. So now here we have the, the pollen. So, okay, we need to move this over here. We need to move this over there. We need to move this one two up, this one two up, this one two up. Get in the pollen. And we need to render this out again we can actually delete this one because we have the copy there so we don't have to render out 10 more seconds that we don't really need so it's this last 10 seconds that's important now so I'm gonna export out again and if I click this little timer thingy I get the same settings that I just had just need to press video only. I don't think I have any sound, but sometimes when I do screen recording, I also add 
accidentally sound uh, the mic on the iPad might be standing on or if I have a, a radio on or so you might get audio with your screen recording okay so same thing just want the last 10 seconds now we can add this one and this one could have added more there but i want to yeah i want to show you another element that i made just to show you how simple it is to make elements like this so Let's go to this one. So here is a screen recording of me moving a little dot around in Procreate. Okay. Look at the skill behind the movement. That's <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just very simple, right? So but that's a fly now. We're going to put that in there. So it's uh, this one, right? Yeah. And I did many seconds and but I went a bit more crazy in the end here. So I want about 10 seconds of this. Good, good. Putting it down here. Uh, just turning off the ones on top, double tapping, um, we can start with cropping, let's see if I get rid of all the other things now, if I only have that fly, yeah, not too bad. Now, keying, there we go, a little hard to see, but, so I don't want that, there we go, now we have a fly, so let's put a couple of those out, we can move this one up, this one up, so We put one fly. Let's see. <laughs> it's kind of hard to see now. Just want to scale it down so it's not too big. There it is. Maybe around this window. So keyframe. Oh, yeah, this one is too long. Yeah, I'm just going to. Make sure it's the same length and then move it back here. Maybe it's gone from one window to the other, right? Let's just see how that uh, looks in the big, the big screen here. It's subtle, but it's there. And uh, actually, gonna put it a bit more here. So it's a bit more centered in a way. Like that. And we're gonna duplicate it. So then I just press this one. Then it has all the same, the keying, the cropping, everything is the same now. And uh, what I do now is I click this layer and then this little thing here, because then I can go in and grab a different part of the animation. So it's not the same. 
and I can also go in and flip it. So these flies are not synced up. Ah, it did turn on that layer. So now you see it's two two flies, and there's they're doing different movement. Just want to have this other one maybe more on this side. Just going to delete that key and get a new key here. Just small details, but they're simple. They only take you a few seconds to make. I actually want this to be higher up here. So just it's really fast and fun to just make these goofy elements. And uh, yeah, so we need to turn on midground as well. Okay. Oh crap! Fifty two. Um, okay, I wanted to do one more thing, but it's a bit difficult. I will. I will add one more layer. This one, it's just a airbrush thing um, made in Procreate with the airbrush. So it's just a kind of like a vignette that I put on top here. And I set this to soft light mode, blending overlay soft light. So it might do a bit much, so I just pull it down a bit, but it gives us a more focus on the middle, right? Let's just see how that looks. Oh, starting to come together here. Um, okay, I will, I will try to do this one more, one more thing, but I need to screen record because I want to have like a handheld feeling. So that's sort of my last thing here. Um, so I'm going to export this again. I don't need ultra now, but I'm going to set it to quality and I'm going to export this. So I need to airdrop this to a different iPad because with screen recording, uh, it's this stupid thing uh, that you can't screen record when you have uh, your iPad connected like I have now. So I'm just going to airdrop this file to a different iPad and I'm going to explain what I do there. So let's see, we are here. So this is the file. Oops, crash. Okay, airdrop. Please work, yes. Cool. I'm going to explain very quickly now what I do. I'm just going to do it first here. So, screen record.
Okay. So I screen recorded that. Now I'm gonna airdrop that back. Cool. So what I did is that I zoomed in a little. So I'm gonna show you the screen recording. You see I zoom in to the playback and I'm using my finger to, to, to give that sort of camera move now. So here is the recording starting. So you see I'm I'm zoomed in and I'm just using one finger to just move it a little up and down, giving it kind of that handheld feeling. So we're gonna go back into LumaFusion and I'm gonna grab that last movie file, the screen recording. So let's see about here. And about here. So I'm putting this down here. So So you see how if I'm playing these two after each other, you see now it's like a steady cam rolling on a dolly perfectly equaled out but but now it's like this handheld like we're more we're more there now we're more part of this it's more like somebody's walking right it gives such a different feeling and i'm gonna add a couple of other elements that i also made um and one of them is this one. And this is me uh, just recording the camera on the phone. And I put it so close to my thigh that it hardly gives any light in. You just put it close to a dark surface and it's really this grainy stuff, right? So I'm gonna, right, I don't need the whole thing. This one. So just about 10 seconds, right? Oops. Put on top there, double tap, set this into screen mode. And maybe it's really gives this warm color too. So I want to also push that one more towards the blue. So looking at this now, see you have that nice flickering, that random flickering from that camera recording, you know, but I, I want to, let me see here, just take it a bit down so it's not too much, but a little, it's like a subtle, uh, flickering on top there. Um, and I have a couple more fun things. So if we go back to Procreate, I made this little thing here. So this is an animation. So it's, it has two frames. So you see it animates this little light there. And I screen recorded that. So it's uh, one of these elements. Yeah, here. So we can also grab like 10 seconds of this. Put on top or maybe actually under under that so this one too we need to uh, move it slightly and 
maybe we need to get rid of the we need to crop away sides there a bit you know all right yeah i ran out of time but just these couple of things and i will so like that now we have that animation going on and as the last thing i go into the main the main animation here and you have really a lot of cool things you can use here and like for example this one big dot uh, you can choose how big dots they should be and also the blend so give it a little bit of that gives that really cool sort of camera raster look, you know? So we have the camera movement now, we have the flickering. <laughs> yeah, and so on and so forth. So it's, you know, you can keep on adding cool stuff but I think I'm gonna just show this now and let you go back to some other cool talks, but at least we made a little scene, a little movie scene. Hope it was fun uh, and uh, hope you learned a lot. So this is a little tease now to what the new course is. So at least part of it. But main part is painting on the new course uh, to my sort of top level painting. A lot of time put in there. So have fun with Lightbox and thank you so much for watching. Okay, bye.